All right, hello and welcome. I've got a little thing I found from the thrift store, Navigating the Internet, a perfect uh, late 90s book capsule, it seems. I guess there was a whole, like, section of books at the thrift store. It looked like a university professor for computer science had recently given a ton of things away. There were a couple different things I picked up, and this was one of them. This one may not be related to those other donations, to be honest, because all the other donations have names on them. So before I dig into this all the way, let's try and guess the date of this book, since I'm not completely sure. Um, it does come with a floppy, so it's got to predate the CD era. On the front here, it mentions the camera will focus. This is only my phone, not a real camera, so bear with me. Mentions, if you can barely make it out, it does mention Windows program, so this is the Windows era. Probably Windows 95 right now is my guess. We flip to the back, we have a picture, some software here. So like maybe it would fit in the Windows 95 styling. And our bullet points here, we have... Let's see, we can join internet discussion groups. Email mentions WISE, W-A-I-S, Archie, and Gopher. Browse the World's Museums and Exhibits Online with WWW and Mosaic. Okay, no mention of, like, Netscape or anything. No Internet Explorer. Okay, so I'm guessing there's not a single uh, ser mention of a search engine in this. Maybe why you would want some sort of book like this. But only maybe, since this did remain unopened. <laughs> Let's get into it. Okay, well, this uh, outside feels pretty, like, oddly glossy and yet warm at the same time, despite being, like, completely unopened. Which is interesting. As do we just skip to the best part? I mean, here it is. Navigating the internet. Disc. This is copyright 1994 Sam's Publishing. Okay, so I was a little off with the Windows 95. Era de Yes, I'm assuming. We have install instructions. So from Program Manager. Okay, yeah, that is definitely Windows 3. So, I'll have to see what I can do with that on a modern Linux machine. <laughs> Alright, so let's look through the book. I guess, first page, we gotta start at the beginning. What can you do on the internet? Electronic mail. Run programs on other computers. Okay, that's actually pretty huge. Still. Um, search for files and discuss. Contact people who share your interests and want to exchange views. I mean, I guess that's what's happening right now if you're watching. So, oh, man. Okay, we have an AOL example address, addressing email. CompuServe, FidoNet. I have not heard of that one. MCI Mail, Prodigy. A bunch of Telnet commands. And that is something out of my wheelhouse. I mean, I, I guess I've used Telnet to... Uh, Flash my router's firmware, that's it. Not really something you use these days. If gopher commands, I will say, I actually don't know what gopher is, so let's see if maybe this book can teach me what gopher is. Isn't it sort of a precursor to HTML, I guess, viewing browsers, like Netscape Inter Internet Explorer, if that's a proper summary of what those programs are. Reader say, okay, we got some pre-reviews. You, you gotta sell people on the book. Recently a large bookstore looking for a book on the internet. There are quite a few. I guess that probably was a huge niche in a bookstore at one point. Do I need to... How to use internet for dummies? Okay, yeah. Another copyright date, just to confirm, this is 94. So, I'm not gonna go page for page necessarily, you're gonna skim through. So here's an overview. This is probably like the most important thing in the book. Seems like we just have an introduction, what is the internet, or a protocol or program that would use the internet, email, FTP, Telnet, Archie, WAIS, database of databases. 
So we'll have to look at these three sections, because these three things are not fell out of favor, and I don't know what those are at all. Global hypertext, World Wide Web, Mosaic, Internetiquette, Manners, and the Internet? Okay, that that might have to be the main section I look at. Internet Navigator's Gazetteer. Alright, so I'm just going to start skimming around. There might be some weird cuts. Hang in there. We'll figure out how to browse the internet. It seems like this is a mix of, like, detailed step-by-step -step things and also technical information. Let's figure out who uses the internet. We've an answer to this question. People of all types. Students as young as five? Oh, boy. Probably even younger now. Man, this is a lot. Yeah, this is gonna have to be like a quick skim. A little graph, visuals. You always got to engage the brain with the visuals. There we go. Number of computers connected to the internet. Here we go. Look, just look at that little jump. 80,000, 900,000, almost a million. I mean, what is that thing every time you install Java? Back in the Windows XP days, on over a billion devices, million devices. I mean, there's probably more computers connected to the internet than people. There's gonna be some people that really love this section. Who owns and runs the internet? No one. There's no single owner, or even a form of coalition that actually owns the internet. The only group that really runs the internet is the Internet Society. Basing internet facts. More than 1,000 computers are added to the internet each day. The amount of data crossing the internet grows by 10% each month. NSFNet has some well-defined rules, an acceptable use policy. We're missing some, like, preamble here, so I guess NSFNet was and or is the core of the internet. 1991, the internet lifted its decade-old ban on business. What can I do on the internet? Mail. Okay, they already outlined this. Hold up. Play games and talk? Through the internet, you can have conversations, quote-unquote, with people all over the real world in real time. And play checkers against other people in artificial intelligence programs in real time. Okay, I think there's a little more than checkers. Okay, so so far this does seem pretty dense enough to be college textbook worthy. Creative and weird things can happen, such as the Internet Cola Machine. Okay, so that was just a Coca-Cola machine that was connected to the Internet and monitored for inventory. We're going to get the NREN, National Research and Education Network. We'll transfer data at speeds at a gigabyte per second. Well, a blazing gigabyte per second? could transfer all the contents of all the volumes of Encyclopedia Britannica in less than one second. And I guess there really wasn't... It was hard to convey, even think of what that would actually be used for. I mean, nowadays we know, hey, that's video files, video game files. That's what, that's what you would use for your gigabyte a second can transfer this analogy. Now, the year 2000, internet probably won't cost much more than a regular telephone line. Um, did that actually happen? <laughs> Time to master navigate. Okay, that was that section. So I just kind of went page by page. I mean, there is just a lot in here. All right, hold up. Delphi offers two charging plans. $10 a month for four hours of use of the internet. Additionally uses $4 an hour. Or 20 hours of use of the internet for $20 a month. What happened to the per hours of use internet model? The first real time, a techie way of saying at the same time it happens, um, so if you use real time like encoding or something in a conversation, what, most people would know what you're talking about, at least like real time. Wouldn't have to explain that. In Europe, many people who use the internet include a small digitized pictures of themselves in a special internet header field. Only in Europe though. <laughs> I see. This is some lost knowledge. There was regional variants in emails back in the day. Oh, they have signatures. You gotta have a signature in your email. Forum signature. Text blocks, jokes, or quotes to end your message. 
It's a poem. Watch for long, complex signature. So people get very incensed in what they call a waste of bandwidth, and some Usenet news groups reject messages. Have it get into. So throw we email away regularly. Um, yeah, little do they know. I have not done that in forever. I probably have, I actually have like a Thunderbird profile that's like multiple gigabytes in size. I had since like 2008. Don't let these guys know. I guess storage became way cheaper though. Okay, I'm going through email encryption. Encryption is a feature that has many people up in arms. There have been suggestions that the US government may make it illegal to use any encryption for electronics messages other than the one they improve. I want to be able to control which encryption standard can be used so that it will be the one they'll be able to code for reasons of national security. How? This is like 30 years ago? <laughs> Nothing has changed, huh? Crypto Rebels. I'll say that, that name... If you were a group called Crypto Rebels today, that's, that comes off a lot different than back in 93. PGP can't legally be used for business purposes. I wonder if there's, like, if I look at PGP, is there something that got, a court case that got resolved or something? I mean, SSL is standard encryption that everyone uses now, so... Obviously, this goalpost did move on this front. Okay, we have domains, TLDs. Let's look at this. Domains are the highest level addressing on the internet. The most common names on use are edu, mil. Um, I've actually, I don't think I've ever seen a dot mil address. If you like get recruited for the army, is that a dot mil site? I don't think it is. Dot ca, dot au, wait, dot uk? Oh, this doesn't explain the dot co dot uk. It was just dot uk. There's a computer called Big Bopper in the University of Southwest Louisiana, which is bigbopper.cas clsu That's a mouthful. What's interesting over here is it shows what is it? Yeah, there's someone who has a dot bitnet domain. Like long text domains have become a big thing like very recently. This book is getting a uh, technical we got the mail RC file. Little tips. Finding people. Okay, address finger. Okay, yeah, we're getting to CLI land. That's how you finger people on your Unix system. Typing finger at the system prompt. Give you information about current users on the machine. It will give you their login name. Well, there we go, they finger Gibbs, and that gives them, hey, their user directory is this. If you want to put give them files, their login name is Gibbs. Okay, there's a for fun extra field real life name. Uh, in real life. Is that where IRL comes from? Okay, what do we got here? A dressing joke. Okay, I skipped too much of the book, I don't get it. <laughs> Alright, we got some definitions. What can you FTP? It's like you can FTP freeware. Freeware is free. Some freeware even comes with the source code. In most scrim groups, altruism is the major motivator. The available source of freeware is the Free Software Foundation, which intends to release public domain. It's like this book doesn't, uh, into the concept of copy left. I guess, I don't know, maybe that wasn't really well known at the time. Image files from other sources offer you still photos from Star Trek, cartoons, and even soft porn. Only soft though. Freeware, they do kind of mention licenses. The presence suggests the copyright has been surrendered, however, they still hold the authors still hold copyright. Unless they give you a different license. Drop the author a note of thanks. Don't bug them about faults, errors, and omissions unless they requested such feedback. <laughs> Don't spam their GitHub page. Shareware has become a significant force in the shareware software business. Software you want to pass to other users. 
Some shareware is called brain damaged or crippled. Doesn't even do everything a registered version. Can only do a limit is limited. What? Okay. That's some new terminology. Don't send me any brain damage programs. Some shareware isn't crippled. After a period of time, it must be reinstalled. And some just nag you. Yeah, nagware. I was just about to say, unless you have a registered copy, a screen pro pops up whenever you start the program. Okay, what is RG? Hold up. It's a mega librarian that automatically registers. Large number of internet servers and creates a single searchable database. It's a collection of servers. So I guess Archie is just an early indexer, not quite search engine. Wait, they have terabytes in this? Why are they mentioning terabytes? 25 terabytes? It's roughly the complete text of Alice in Wonderland. This number of times, I'm not even reading that. 173 milli. Billy, trilly. Trillion if it's got three, right? I don't know numbers. Only computers. This is like such a different internet. Like it's hard for me to even like think of like what kind of like program a web modern web browser is. Like what the internet would be without browsers. But I guess this book is explaining that. Like you still, I can still understand like a email, FTP. You can still have those. Then like searching for data and files. You're not going to a website and doing that. You're using Archie. Using Wise. Okay, so now we have Gopher. We have yet another way to look for stuff. You can go for data. The terrible pun that resulted in the name Gopher is the responsibility of someone at the University of Minnesota. Instead of surfing through cyberspace, we're digging. We're mining through cyberspace. The entire gopher space is made up of computers of gophers, made up of gopher servers located internationally. Let's look at this. Using gophers, now we've installed it on, say, our Windows PC is this, or I guess just on our PC, not our Windows PC, our DOS PC, version 3.3 .3 or greater. So they're going to be the Unix version screenshots, quote unquote. Get the following screen. So we get a nice little text menu here. We get so we're on a root gopher server for this university. Look at libraries, news, phone books, we can get Louisiana weather, US weather. Okay, I mean that's that's pretty intuitive and easy right there. The help desk. The above flip is a much more hip kind of gopher. This is hip. They got a page on the Grateful Dead. Cyberpunk? Tools? Whole Earth Review the Magazine. Okay, that's just the magazine in text, I guess. You know, I want to see the cyberpunk section. I want to of this gopher... You know, I'm trying to call it all a gopher site. It's kind of a anachronism, not the term you would use. We got, oh, I got a French one. Time for me to whip out my super rusty French. Just don't write to complain about my lousy French. Yes. Do not write to me either. Okay, well, I think I'm understanding what Gopher is. So we're just a pre-internet. Pre-HTML browsing internet. Advanced Gophering. Dude, we have all the Gopher servers in the world. Okay, you just search. You can just run through each one and see what they all have. Because they have Apple Computer, Higher Education. Okay, here we go. So this is what I know. Global hypertext, the World Wide Web. World WWW's model is to treat all the internet's data as hypertext. It's a different metaphor than the gopher system. Gopher is all menus. Okay, so this did exist at the time. Okay, so World Wide Web is sort of like the idea, the protocol that we all know and love today. Okay, I think I think we're gonna get something uh, most internet users today can understand now. Mosaic. So now we're taking World Wide Web, which was introduced in the previous chapter. Now we have a new tool that can uh, 
is capable of showing embedded vi graphics, video, sound, links to other documents. What? There we go. Screenshot. NCSA Mosaic Document View. Watch a vid digital video from the NCSA's Digital Gallery CD-ROM. I mean, now, now I'm just looking at old Mosaic pages. Scrolls from the Dead Sea. Use Mosaic to ask Archie? To steer you towards an anonymous FTP so you can search for Win3. And here's what the results of the file search would be. Welcome to Wired on the World Wide Web. Issues of the magazine here, Wired. You can just get a tour of Mosaic. Oh, we got sound. You can juggle several screens like this, and you can end up with a screen that looks like this. You know, just every computer user's nightmare. Ultimately, Mosaic may change the way most people use the internet for education and research. It'll bring more and more users in. It's likely that before too much longer, Mosaic, or a near descendant of it, will become the universal way of accessing global information. So the time to become Mosaic aware is now. Alright, now here is the important section. Internetiquette. Manners in the internet. There's some standards of combat conduct that are considered acceptable and some are not. Alright, so let's like, check out our internet kit. What do we what are we supposed to do in the internet? When you were young, your mother told you how to behave. Now we tell you instead. Alright, so don't shout, alright? Do not use all caps. Messages in all uppercase are hard to read and also very irritating. Suitable response is to politely ask people who do this to stop. If they don't, be generous. Perhaps they're waiting on their computer service engineer to fix their shift key. The shouter is your boss. You're on your own. Correct addressing. Okay. Young lady in a major corp. Stepping what was once called a dalliance. With a young gentleman employed by the same organization. And a fit of pike. Dude, what are these words? I actually don't know these words. Decided to write to him on the company's electronic mail system. She wrote a great length about his failings as a companion, both socially and sexually. She then sent the letter to everyone in her division. Um, don't reply all. Quotability. Remember that anything you can send can be easily and almost instantly forwarded to others. Indeed. I'm sure that a message asking you to do something potentially indiscreet is from the person it claims to be from. Okay, this is not completely etiquette. It's just things to look out for, too. Your tone? What well, may sound funny or reasonable in speech can sound aggressive, abrupt, or just plain rude in text only. If you think you might be misinterpreted, you can, if circumstances protect... Permit, use email shorthand and emoticons. Watch other people's tone. What the hell do you resent? So the next ten minutes, jabbering out my apologies. I had mistaken resent for resent. Oh no. Suitable content. Don't be coarse, vulgar, or suggestive. Many a management career has been founded. Rocks things that shouldn't have been written down. Emails can make the rocks come up. Okay. So again, nothing's ever changed. Okay, this is very much suggesting you're only using the internet for, like, work or education stuff. Though, that's how this seems to be written. Discretion. Send anything you wouldn't send in a letter. Uh, don't flame people. You write a message, obviously in anger, and say what you think, quotes, shadow quotes. Don't do chain letters. The bandwidth to send them is a waste of resources. You forward this email, or Bart Simpson will come to your office. 
Okay, we got email shorthand and emoticons. Email shorthand refers to acronyms that are strategically placed in messages. They could include LOL, OTF, ROTFUL, not, not just ROFL, rot, ROTFUL. You gotta remember the T. What happened to the T? I am HO. Some of these got abbreviated. Mileage may vary. I didn't know your mileage may vary was this old. I definitely remember, like, playing, like, old kids' educational games in the late 90s, early 2000s that would also cover these emoticons. Sequences of characters that denote faces and expressions. There are literally hundreds. They're better if they are typed in a monospaced mono font, where every character is the same width. They read sideways. Wink, as in, good product. Can't be bothered to stop sending the product. Smile. Sure you don't mean it. Okay, this is all, all business. Oh, we got so many emoticons. User needs a haircut. Um, user is cross. User is undecided. User is shocked. I mean, these, these all predate me. The time I used forums and stuff, it was all about just forum smileys. I saw, I saw a little bit of this. User wears a scuba mask. I feel like they're just making some of these up. User wears a turban. Horns. B? That's not sunglasses? Isn't B sunglasses? Got a capital B with a smiley. User is the Pope. User has a beard. That... Okay, these are all reaches. User is a male. Wait, what? What? My lips are sealed. User is dead. Okay, that one... I'm pretty sure an X would be... Like, X for eyes would be associated with death. That's what I would think of. Okay, the, the authors were just having fun with this. One example of a modern folktale is a lady who tried to dry her poodle in a microwave oven. Message on the internet. Much of the same thing happens because messages are text. Copies are filed away and then resurfaced later. Oh, okay, so this is just a bunch of, like, old school Onion articles. Like, I remember Mouse Balls. It's an old one I remember reading about. Yeah, we got modem tax. There's a proposal to tax modems. Story pops up like once a year in a public forum. Okay, this is just... Just other netiquette things. If you find a problem in the computer system, tell the supervisor. It's important to remember the internet is a cooperative environment. If people start abusing the trust of the community, that cooperative spirit will be in danger of evaporating. Once it's gone, the internet... Will never be the same again. I mean, I'd say you know, modern internet still is cooperative, a cooperative spirit. Okay, now it's talking about Usenet. Here's an example of Usenet discussions. Okay, we got someone doing a some video movie discussion using the internet for business. All right, I want to make money using the internet. Telecommuting? Telecommuting is where rather than travel to your place of work, you work from your house and use computer communications. No more commute, no more traffic, nice surroundings. If you're so inclined, you can even work in your pajamas. Okay. And they mention if you live in LA, you definitely uh, want to work from home, huh? The internet becomes ubiquitous. One of the major problems that faced telecommuters will disappear. That was bandwidth. Okay, yeah, I guess... 93, if you needed to do anything other than just send... Just communicate in text. Now, to consider transferring a contract document of 200 kilobytes. That will take 14 minutes. Man, there's so much... There's so many things in this book that just still exist, exist more... It just makes you feel like the world has not really changed that much. At the present, telecommuting is still a novel idea. Many aspects that have not been examined or practically tested. 
All right, this is public dial-up internet access list. Okay, so here's just a single like example. You, the Capcom, you can connect to the Capcom library network. Fees, 35 startup. Okay. This is, this is just a directory. You need gopher access, you can connect to Clarknet. $23 a month. This is, okay, this is a huge directory. A list of gopher sites. See if there's any weird sections. So it would be mostly just university program focused. Chemistry, computers, environment, medical, Photonics, primates, okay, there's just a primate gopher server. Employment opportunities and resume postings, okay, internet's still early on, but you can still do this online. Internet cyberspace related. The uh, uh, Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF, exist back then. Meagle. Okay, we got music. There's some music on Go Gopher. What is the melting point of tungsten? Okay, so they want you to go... They want you to go to the MSDS sheets. Page. It's like from Gopher. They were selecting menu items. And there you go. All right, what do you do on the disk? We've got Chameleon Sampler, TCP IP software, HGopher, WinCode, utility for UU encoding and UU decoding binary files. That was mentioned in email. That was how you would attach files to an email. Newsgroup Reader. Okay, so none of this software is probably going to be that useful. I can just kind of click it and open it up. This includes Telnet and Ping. I guess for Windows, that is useful. The stuff that's built into your Unix, Linux, whatever system you have. Okay, now we, it, wait, is this just, oh. These are just lists of places to go now, okay. Here's Toyota. Toyota website, computers, Commodore Amiga. There's an address. These are all lists, listservs, Usenet. Okay, this is just a huge directory of addresses. You see, we'd need this. Wait, 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 wait. Installing and administering Linux systems. Is Linux really in use already? Operating systems. Looks 386 BSD. Next step. Privacy issues. Alt.privacy on Usenet. Oh, this is so much. Talk about this. You can talk about Star Trek. Folk lore. Wait, this is, I think all, yeah, the, all the rest of this is just that. Human sexuality. Um, holistic. Back rubs. Queen? Discussion about the rock group Queen. Which is literally everyone, everyone's server. I went singing. I mean, all this is on the internet. Religious discussion. Military technology. Yeah, I mean, I'll just go through this forever. This, this probably alone could be its own video. I could just run through all these sections. We got one for each country. Peru, Poland, 
Slovenia. And then we got the index. So that was the book. Navigating the internet. So yeah, that was pretty in-depth. As someone that is a bit versed in computer science and Linux systems, I definitely did really appreciate this book. I got everything. Um, yeah, I mean, look into network, like basic networking classes, using a Linux system. You thought anything that was in this was interesting. I guess we'll take a look at the disk. I don't think it'll be that interesting based on what it says the programs are. We'll see. I'll pop the floppy in. Okay, so I went and broke the floppy disk out of its seal, inserted it into my USB floppy reader, and it does still read. Now, the sticker on the floppy did fall off as I took, took it out. This heat from where it was stored or whatever messed it up. So it looks like it just is an install.exe. Okay, so I got the floppy disk copied over finally. And I guess... um. All we really have to do is run install.exe. We'll see what Wine does with it, because this is a Linux system. And here's the BMP from the installer, it looks like. I guess I'll just double-click it. This is probably probably a 16-bit executable. Like, you know, targeted towards Windows 3. Wine, I th don't think really is good compatibility with that era. Okay, so double-clicking it did try and open it with wine. Does it execute permissions? Okay, so I think I just made a rookie mistake. I did dot slash instead of wine install.exe. And it at least started running using wine vdm.exe. I think it, it just crashed, because it kicked me back here, though. I hit enter. Yeah, it crashed. Okay, so I figured out how to use DOSBox, and now I can possibly run the exe in it. So, I've changed over to this folder here where I copied over the fo floppy files. I'll hit enter for install.exe, and it requires Windows. Um, okay, well, I think that's as far as I go, then. So, it's a... 16-bit Windows only program that Wine doesn't really support. Um, I have heard that like 16-bit Wine support is not very good. So it's kind of a niche area of time for programs. It's like either run DOSBox or it's got a 32-bit version, generally. I guess I will have to end on this sort of unsatisfying note. There probably is a way to get this running if I really wanted, maybe with a virtual machine or something. But yeah, that was a t look through navigating the internet, the book. Nice, thick, college-level textbook. Um, it's still in some pretty interesting things in it, I will say. And yeah, thanks for watching. Take care.